Hey, what's going on everybody? Mario here. Hey guys, I want to talk a little bit about this whole thing, uh, military service thing with Tim Walls. Um, wanted to let you guys know a little bit about my background. Okay, um, I'm actually, I retired as an AGR soldier. Uh, I did retire to active duty, but AGR is basically active, active guard reserve. Uh, so most of these soldiers, what they do is they manage the uh, National Guard units, right? And about eight years of my life were um, pretty much managing an infantry company. Uh, you know, I managed, it, it was once a Bradley fighting vehicle um, type of company. It was a heavy mechanized unit and ended up, uh, you know, converting over to strikers. Okay. Um, I was the uh, readiness NCO slash fucking first sergeant. Okay. So believe me, everything I'm going to tell you guys, it's, it's all true. I'm going to tell you guys about my experiences with uh, some of these, uh, these people that like to dodge deployments. And I really feel that what happened with Tim Walls is very fucking true because I saw it. Okay. So, um, my first deployment, you know, and pretty much every deployment that I went to, you always, before a unit goes anywhere, you get what they call a warning order or a warn -out. Basically telling you where you're going, um, you know, to prepare the unit for it. And then they start giving you like, uh, you know, timelines of where you need to be at and also taking your, your equipment and your personnel to uh, an active duty post in order for you guys to do your 90 to 125 day certification before you deploy to Iraq. Okay, so um, Tim Walls is basically a command sergeant major who's supposed to be the senior leader, senior enlisted leader of a battalion, right? So think about it. He, the battalion commander is right here. The command sergeant major is right here. That's his right hand fucking person, right? So Tim Walls was a command sergeant major, which is very impressive, you know, because it's very hard for you to make it to that level. So um, apparently, the, Megan Kelly uh, uh, interviewed a gentleman who was a first sergeant. He's just above a sergeant major, uh, below, sorry. Um, and um, I guess they were good buddies or whatever. So he, so he kind of explained what happened with him. He said that uh, that in, he ended up taking a command sergeant major job and um, that uh, he was given a, pretty much a provisional, it was a provisional uh, promotion, uh, meaning that, they, that he would need to uh, complete sergeant major academy when he would return back from deployment. I, that happened to me as well. I was a specialist and became a sergeant. And um, they told me that in order for me to keep my rank, when I came back, I needed to go to uh, primary uh, primary leadership uh, course, so PLDC back in the day. And then based on that, I could keep my rank, right? And I did that. I took advantage of it because I was really one of the most senior E4s at that time. And, um, you know, my, my platoon sergeant and my commander recommended me to the battalion commander, and I got promoted that way. And, you know, I continued, uh, you know, doing my thing until I retired as an E7. Um, so um, going back to what we're saying here with Tim Walls, uh, Tim Walls basically knew when he was uh, supposed to go to Iraq. You know, the, I'm sure that the, the, the unit probably went to uh, a National Guard or an active duty post to do their, their certification before they were deployed. And I believe around this timeline is when he decided to put in his retirement paperwork and uh, not deploy with the unit. I find that to be very fucking pathetic, to be honest with you. All right. Because if you are the command sergeant major, you're the one that's a senior leader. You're supposed to set the example. And somehow you push that out of going to Iraq. That doesn't sit well with me, and I'm sure it didn't sit well with a lot of people. And this is basically what this uh, gentleman that Megan Kelly uh, interviewed uh, pretty much said as well. And he kind of said it in a nicer way, but I, I don't give a shit. I'm retired. I can say what I want to say because technically this is what I saw when I was over there. Like I'm saying, I'm, I'm the head administrator for my unit, right? So... At my first deployment, I had a first sergeant, not my first sergeant, but the first sergeant from our uh, sister unit, 
pull starter going our rack. They ended up putting an E7 in charge, and he was the acting first sergeant, and pretty much was the first sergeant throughout the uh, uh, deployment, 18 month deployment to Iraq, all right? So think about it. Your most senior fucking guy decides to push out, so your second in command takes over and does a phenomenal job and gets their people through, and uh, you know, they deploy to 18 months and shit, and then they come back and. Uh, and they're good to go. But what happens if your most senior leader decides to push out before you even go? What kind of example are you setting for your soldiers? This is exactly what Tim Walls did. Tim Walls somehow found a loophole and decided to fucking uh, retire before his unit went and deployed to Iraq. Okay. And uh, somehow pushed out of it. I don't know what he said or what he did. But uh, must have been significant in order for the National Guard to retire him, okay? Um, so technically, I mean, this guy is no, no different than, uh, than uh, I believe, a guy named Jim Carrey or what, whatever his name is, the guy from Utah, the guy that uh, got a Purple Heart for not doing his fucking job and people in his unit expose his ass. Um, and we're starting to see that shit now. We're starting to see guys that were in this previous unit calling them out, saying, how the fuck do you become the command sergeant major of a battalion and the most senior leader, and you're supposed to set the example when you push out of a fucking deployment? I don't know about you guys, but I was a soldier. I enjoyed that shit. To me, it was like, I don't want to practice. I didn't want to do training and practice and practice for something I wanted to be part of combat, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to experience that shit, and I experienced that plenty, <laughs> so, um, but what I would tell you is that, uh, what strikes me as odd is that this is the same guy that pushed out of going to Iraq, and was one of the guys that got elected to Congress, and was the guy that was trying to be against the government for the Iraq war, how the fuck does that work, but anyways, I would tell you guys, what I'm telling you guys is that I'm, I'm speaking from experience. I've seen so many people that pushed out of fucking going to Iraq. We had a first sergeant, we had an E7 Sergeant First Class, and we had a staff sergeant that were part of the rear detachment. Basically, the guys that stay back and hold the unit until we, we get back. And they didn't do shit for 18 months. The unit was in shambles, everything was all messed up. And this is the kind of crap that we came back to after an 18 month deployment to Iraq. All right. So, <clears throat> what I'm telling you guys is that what they're talking about, Tim Walls, is fucking true. And, and it's true to a certain point because I seen it. I experienced it. I was part of it. And the fact that we saw so many people puss out, it really does piss me off. It really does piss me off that now all of a sudden these guys want to fucking be all like there's some fucking great warriors and shit and how the liberals want to make this guy look like he's some great warrior he ain't shit he's a fucking dodger as soon as he saw fucking uh you know having to do his job for real he pushed out that's exactly who tim walls is guys all right and i can tell you i give me i give you guys my background i'm telling you i this is what i seen when i was there um it is very fucking spineless motherfuckers like that that really pissed me off it was also one of the reasons why i retired because i got tired of all these spineless motherfuckers trying to tell me how to do my job afterwards they, they didn't fucking do shit but that's for another video guys but anyways i just want to give you guys my two cents on tim walls and i can tell you guys that most likely he found a loophole to get the fuck out of there before he could go to iraq which in reality, do you guys want a Dodger as your fucking vice president? I know I don't. But anyways, that's all I got, guys. Like always, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. And I'm out.